Hey guys, Alton here. First off, I want to say thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. Now in today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at one of my selected lectures from my eight hour introduction to Windows Server 2016 for beginners course. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. In this video, we're going to go ahead and add Active Directory to our Windows server and promote it to a domain controller. So go ahead and open up VirtualBox and start up your server. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up. And in regards to what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to add the Active Directory domain services role. We're then going to let that install. And then we're going to promote our server to a domain controller. So we don't need our Windows 10 machine. We only need our Windows server up and running. So what I'm going to do is let me go ahead and let's just keep it full screen. I thought about making it a little smaller, but I think full screen is fine. So we'll go ahead and log in and let everything load up within server manager. So um, just something to make things run a little faster. What I did before I booted up this machine is I allocated it more RAM and I allocated it a lot more processor cores specifically for this video. So whenever you're just doing a single thing with one of your virtual machines, feel free to do that. Feel free to give it more processor cores and to give it more RAM. But just remember that when you're going to boot up your other virtual machines that you need to shut down this machine and reduce the amount of RAM and reduce the amount of processor cores. But when you're adding roles and features, if you want to make it go faster, you can definitely do that. So anyways, let's go ahead and let's get started. So we want to click in Server Manager. We want to click on Add Roles and Features. Uh, this is just a standard page that we see every time when we go into the Add Roles and Features wizard. We can actually click here and then we won't see it in the future. Click Next. We're going to do a role-based or feature-based installation. So click Next. It's going to ask us for the server. We only have one server. We don't have a pool of different servers. So just keep everything the way that's selected. Click Next. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add Active Directory Domain Services. And it's going to give us a detailed view of everything that's going to be added. Click Add Feature. And it'll check mark Active Directory Domain Services. So make sure you're doing this one and not one of the other ones. Click Next. It also tells us some additional things that are going to be installed when we add this on. Click Next. Click Next again. And then click Install. Now in terms of this installation process, in regards to how long it's going to take, uh, again it depends on the speed of your virtual machine. It could take a minute or it could take 10 minutes. So just let it run. Um, what you could do if you wanted to you could hit close here and then when it's done you can click up here where the notifications are and it's going to give you a notification to promote your server to a domain controller. Since this is an educational video we'll go ahead and leave this started. So I'll just go ahead and let this continue to run and I'm going to pause the video and then when it's done we'll go ahead and we'll continue. All right, so when the installation is finished, you'll notice that it says that it is completed or it has succeeded. However, configuration is required. So let me go ahead and highlight that. And also, you'll note that we have this text right here that says promote this server to domain controller. And we also had a new box down here pop up as well. I'm not sure if you noticed that as well, but we'll take a look at this when we're done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click here where it says promote this server to domain controller. Now, if you accidentally click close, you can do it over here as well. You can click here and you can say promote this server to a domain controller. So either way is fine. It takes you to the same page. So we'll go ahead and click that. And then I'll go ahead and close this page and I'll go ahead and close Server Manager for now as well. And actually, Server Manager is required to be open to do that post configuration. So I guess we'll have to leave it open. Let's see if we can minimize it. There we go. So I just want to make sure that it's easier to see what we're doing here. 
So this is where we actually configure Active Directory domain services with a configuration manager. So we installed the role, but now we have to do some post deployment configuration to promote this server to a domain controller. So we need to determine what are we going to do? Add a domain controller to existing domain, add a new domain to an existing forest or add a new forest. Well, we're going to choose the third one because we don't have an existing domain and a forest is a collection of domains. We definitely don't have that either. So we're going to create a new forest or in other words, a new domain. Now you can call this whatever you want. It has to be a domain name or a DNS name. So I'm just going to call mine alnet.com. Now, if you were doing this in a production environment, you typically wouldn't want to use a domain name unless it was registered to you and you owned it because you may run into some DNS issues. And we'll take a look at DNS later in this course. So if you're doing this in a production environment, you may want to do .local, which is fairly common because that's not going to be out there on a website in public DNS server records. However, because we are in a test environment, you can call this whatever you want because we're not connecting out to the real world. We're not connecting out outside of the sandbox testing environment. So mine, I'm going to call it alnet.com. Click next. And then in terms of the domain controller, options. So our functional level, I'll just click on this to show you, is that if you were interacting with other domain controllers and they were Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2012, you would have to choose that functional level. But because we're only utilizing Windows Server 2016, we're just going to select 2016 rather than choose some older additions. So for example, if I did choose 2008, then we could choose 2008 for the functional level as well. So let's go ahead and let's switch these back to 2016. And now we have to set up a directory services restore mode password. So go ahead and put a strong password in there. And then click next. And DNS delegation, you'll always get this message when you set up Active Directory domain services for the first time. So ignore that. Click next. And now it's going to create your net BIOS name based upon the domain name that you inputted. We'll give this a minute to run and it should be listed as is simply the name before the .com or the .net or whatever you put in there up to a certain amount of characters. So click next. Now for some additional options, we don't need to change these. So for the different paths here, for the database folder, for the logs and the system volume, leave that all at its default, click next. And we can review all of our settings here. And if we wanted to do this as a script with PowerShell in the future, we could view the script, simply save this script. And then if we wanted to deploy more Active Directory DS domain controllers on other servers and create the same settings, we could simply use this template. We're not going to do that, so we don't need to save it, but I just wanted to show that to you. Click next. Now it's going to do a prerequisites check here, and you're going to notice that there are certain things that it's going to list that we take a look at, but those are common. We see those every single time. You can ignore these. Click install, and what it's going to do, it's now going to promote this server to a domain controller. So I'm going to let this run and when it's done, I'll return. All right. So when it's done, you'll see right here, a check mark that says this server was successfully configured as domain controller. And it says that we're going to be signed out. And what it says is that this computer is being restarted so it can start up that active directory domain services role and actually run this as a domain controller. So we're going to let it reboot. And what you're going to notice when we log back in is that we're going to be logging into our domain. So in a second, when we get to the login screen and when this is all set up, we're not going to log in with our local account on the computer. We're going to be logging into our domain with our domain administrator account. So by default, when you set this up, the administrator account that you're logging in with will be on the domain. 
and it creates that account when we set up Active Directory Domain Services and we promote this computer to a domain controller. So it may take a few minutes for it to do this the first time. It's going to be setting everything up for the first time as a domain controller. So I'm going to pause the video and then when this is done and we get to the login screen, I'll be back. All right, so let's go ahead and log in. Input keyboard, insert all control delete. And what you're going to notice here is that our login is prefaced by our domain, alnet forward slash administrator. So we're going to be logging in to our domain for the first time with our administrator account for that domain. And what you're going to know is that it's preparing the desktop for this account because, well, we're logging into the domain for the first time. So what we'll notice when server manager loads up all the way, and let's go ahead and let this finish loading. And once it's done, I'll make it full screen. You're gonna notice that for the server roles and server features that are down here, and let's go ahead and let's make this full screen now, is that we have a couple new ones and I'll go ahead and highlight them. We have our Active Directory Domain Services listed as ADDS, and we have DNS up and running. So these are the two new roles that were added onto the server and that they're active. So we added Active Directory DS. So why do we have DNS? Well, Active Directory DS uses domain names. That's why we call them domain controllers and we call it a domain. So it needs to have DNS up and running. So DNS performs part of the duties. So DNS is something that's installed as well. And we'll take a deeper dive look at DNS as well later in this course. So we successfully promoted our server to a domain controller by adding the Active Directory domain services role, and that also added in DNS. So we're done, but we do need to take a snapshot. So we'll go to machine, we'll take a snapshot, and we'll say Active Directory DS role added and promoted to domain controller. And we'll say promoted to DC. We'll take a snapshot and then we will be done. So if you have any questions about what we did in this video, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.